You're welcome back. And once again, we'll briefly just listen to uh, James Agaga calling for Tiwa to resign. I'm talking about the CID boss. And could you upon Krumah's response, as in government's response, uh, to the calls for her to check out because of what she has done? What has she done? She gave a press conference earlier and said, we know where the girls are. Very soon, they will be home safely. They will be reunited with their parents. Then, not long after that, she came out, and what did she say? I was only seeking to give hope. So, is that the reason she should resign? James Agaga, former Interior Deputy Minister of the Interior, believes so, together with many people in the Ghanaian community. Um, did the minister say anything about that? I doubt. But the fact that they are focused on finding the girls. Let's listen to the two of them. So I am very disappointed to say the least. I think that um, Mami Tiwa's um, latest comment with regards to the kidnapping of the uh, three girls has brought the entire police administration, I mean, into disrepute. Remember, she is the head of criminal investigations of the police service. And so when she came out and categorically told Ghanaians at that press conference that they knew where the girls were and that the girls were going to be brought back. All of a sudden, she's now telling us one man down the line that um, she was misconstrued. She was very categorical that, yes, they knew where the girls were and we're going to produce the girls in no time. So these contradictory, I mean, statements coming from the CID boss I, it's very unfortunate. So while our hearts are with uh, the families and um, we continue to keep fingers crossed and follow the reports that they are making available to us of this uh, high-level collaborative operation involving a number of agencies in and outside Ghana, we also want to encourage that uh, anybody out there who has information and media houses that have platforms and channels should help us channel all of that uh, to get some more information that can help um, the effort in that area. So obviously, uh, the families of these girls are worried, especially when they heard from the CID boss that the location was known, and subsequently she's saying that she's motivated. And in fact, we've heard from the NDC as suggesting that the CID boss should step aside as a result of their conflicting comments on it. I think that at this point in time, the best conversation is how do we get more information out? How do we get... I mean, it's not possible that it is only this single gentleman who knows everything about um, these girls, and that apart from this gentleman, nobody else has information. People, somebody will have information out there. Already there's been some preliminary information that has been gathered by the security agencies, and they inform us that they are working on a high-level collaborative uh, operation uh, with agencies, both locally and internationally, to try and deal with that matter. All right. You're welcome back. So you had... Um, I let me, let me find out from Kofi briefly about this. Why is this, is this position the NDC's position? Because we hear most of the communicators of the NDC say she should go. Is this the official position of the NDC that she should check out simply because she was seeking to give hope to, you know, parents of the kidnapped girls? Uh, thank you, Samson. I think it is not just the NDC, it is about the country. It goes beyond the NDC. And we must not restrict this matter of the comments of the head of the CID and the missing girls as an NDC against the boss of CID matter. It goes way, way uh, beyond that. It's, it's something that if you listen to the country, that is what the country is seeking for. Because one, you, you, you have given us an assurance. We could allow when the minister of uh, gender and earlier said that, oh, they are safe and blah, blah, blah. That one could be considered The two of them spoke almost the same language. Yeah, yeah. Political, mm -hmm. uh, maybe political talk because the person is not directly in charge of investigative How bodies. How can that be forgivable and that, uh, that of the CID that, board Even that one, it's not, it, it's not pardonable. No, you, if, if you are in leadership, you ought not be Samson, saying things am, that are, I am saying that, 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 I that am, are false I am saying, and be said that that's okay to I let am you saying go because that, you are I'm saying that. I'm saying that for her even, for her even, she shouldn't have been there. But 
Why? Because she said it, she went through the processes, everybody endorsed it. So the CID boss also will feel that. Then maybe I'm also pleased to come in and add my bit to it. And it is getting out of hand. Maybe people thought that after she did that, it was going to end there. Some call for her head, but it didn't get the level of support that we are having today. Maybe if at that time we had dealt with her the way people, everybody is now clamoring on the CID boss now, maybe we would not have reached this point. You see, the CID is responsible for our criminal investigations. And so before you come out to put anything, you must be very sure what it is that you are putting out. Clearly, clearly, we must not allow anybody, whether the person is an assemblyman, whether he's a district chief executive, whether he's head of department, whether he's a minister or BNI boss or whatever, to mislead people, especially when it comes to matters of intelligence and security. Okay, you, you think this is misleading? Clearly, but that's what she, that's what she has told us. That when she said they she knew she where they were. No, she said, when she said they knew where they were. No, she mm. spoke English. She that said she was misunderstood. Knew. Her reply in Chi, she said, Look, The press conference was not done in Chi. Mm -hmm. The press conference that announced we knew where they were, and very soon we will, they will join their families, was done in English. So was it the English that we, not, they, we knew where we are? Also, they didn't know. Mm -hmm. They were still searching. So okay. why then just, do you Just say, hold on. Listen to her. Listen to what she had to say. Um, see, they are not me, 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 but people misunderstood me. However, I cannot give any timelines yet, saying we will find them today or tomorrow. Okay. She, she could have said what she said now on that day, that we are still working. We haven't actually located, but we are doing everything using all machinery at our disposal, both local and international, to make sure that we get these kids and reconcile them with their family. That would have been more hope to them than what they, are, they find themselves today, that the boss of CID, who earlier told them, gave them some scintilla of hope that, oh, now they know where they, they, they are, and very soon we may be seeing them, not knowing, okay. was just speaking out of some kind of imagination. Mm. Even the, the attorney general, was she even thought that truly they knew where they were? And she was worried of even that disclosure, right. that if even you knew, disclosing the fact that you knew when you have not rescued them was dangerous. Right. You were endangering the lives mm. of the kidnapped girl. Right. So it was wrong, wrong, wrong on all, on okay. all fronts. Thank you. Now, Kuku, again, the, the General Secretary of the Christian Council, Dr. Kwabina Opune Frimpong, has had to say something about this. I don't know if you agree with her. He says that she didn't speak Greek and that what she said was understood. As far as he's concerned, he joins those who say an apology is sufficient. He joins people like uh, Adam Bona, uh, security expert, who is saying that an apology will do. She, she goofed, but she can apologize. Um, he said, um, Mamitiwa Adodankwa must know that people are hurt, and it is not as simple um, as, oh, you didn't understand me. When she was categorical about the location of the girls, that was English language she spoke. It is not Greek. So coming back to say, you didn't understand me, it's neither here nor there. And he simply asked that she should apologize. And that should be the end of the matter. Apology should be sufficient? Well, I find it so difficult. I have to be very honest with you. A very uh, fine officer. Really interrogating issues. Kofi Adam says she's a very fine officer. Yes, beautiful woman. Mm. Beautiful. Makes nature so, so beautiful. 
you know. Yeah. Who is going the wrong, <laughs> the wrong angle? <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Okay. And then her career trajectory, brilliant, right. absolutely brilliant. That's why I find it difficult that she's trapped in this whole credibility crisis, challenges. It's so unfortunate. This is a service that doesn't produce, hasn't produced too many women of her stature. And so for her to break through the barrier and get to where she is, it's brilliant and I salute her. Mm. But honestly, I'm really, really disappointed. Mm. Uh, you know, when she said she made that disclosure or that statement to the effect that uh, the girls, the whereabouts had been, you know, located mm. and that the family should keep on keeping on. She actually said they are safe. Yes. Mm. I. I I was one of the few who backed her. There were people who said, no, there was no need for that disclosure. Mm. Bring the girls, then give them to the family. I said, well, that meant for me, no police officer or agency of that stature would go out and see what she said if they didn't know where the girls were. They may have done things to the extent that the girls couldn't even be moved from yeah. that location. So I they are virtually, that, yes. Yeah. And I encouraged people not to attack her. I did so. Now I'm embarrassed to be honest with you, because subsequently, uh, the explanation she's given, the one on Atinga FM, she now says that what she meant was to give hope to the police mm. and not to the families. That wasn't uh -huh. the case. Hope to the police. You know, Graphic has apologized to her mm. and done a retraction of an earlier story they published when they said, she said she was giving hope to the families. Graphics come up, if you go to Graphic Online, apologizing that what she rather meant according to her was that she was giving hope to the police how i don't get it you're giving hope to the police you have to you hold a press, the press conference yeah. to tell the world yeah. that you are giving yourselves hope, hope. It's, it's a very sad development and i'm so 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 hurt because i think she's done well for herself and you no know, well, it is so maybe she can apologize and maybe maybe they should find ways and means of redeploying her within the same system, maybe. Because right now, Interesting. people, the cynicism, the mm. skepticism that people meet CID policies and decisions and things, it's, it's overwhelming. She probably has not said and anything person, different, we, we from, different from what all other people, including uh, preacher men, are doing in town and praying. Oh. That's um, what the, the Bible says hope deferred See, makes the heart sick. There's, but so hope much, is good. there's so much pastoral buffoonery around out there. Pastoral what? Buffoonery? Yes. Out there. They're out there. Making noise, saying all sorts of things. They, they are like rumor peddlers, gossipers. I mean, that's what they are. We should, that's another subject matter. That we should have the courage of conviction to deal with as a nation. It's become an industry of a sort, a very terrible one. Mm. But we are talking about the police service. Mm. She's not the first police officer to be subjected to serious public attacks, if you go through our history. But in her case, it's more like self-inflicted. It worries me. I think she would do herself, herself a lot of good if she, is, uh, she requests that she's redeployed from the CID to another sector of the police. The CID today is high profile. Everybody is talking of the CID and things, you know. And her career, I don't want to see a situation where her career will be truncated or destroyed. Okay. Yeah. Is that what you um, Sack, apology, resignation, now redeployment. I think all these side steps bigger issues. I like to always look at the bigger issues. Because often we're distracted by the smaller ones. Miss Tiwa is a smaller aspect of a bigger problem. The police have suffered from long-standing systemic structural problems that is reflected in the situation we find ourselves in. And so I do not think that any of these applied to her will change anything. It doesn't mean that those calling for some action are wrong. Because normally when these things happen, you know, some action must be taken. The question is whether taking the action of itself addresses anything. Police communication, which is the major issue, is terrible in Ghana. And I've always said this. And the reason that is, is because 
We don't have victim impact policing. Our policing traditionally has been state-oriented. In other words, the state is interested. Everyone else is pushed into the background. The complainant is just a witness, and you are really not treated with that seriousness. The police decide when they continue and when they discontinue. The Attorney General's Department exercises prosecutorial discretion <coughs> in this country in a terrible way, and we have said this over the, over the years. Not a prosecutor is an, is yeah. an example. Yeah. And when it doesn't get to the Attorney General's Department, the police decide when they will continue with the prosecution. Sometimes files are sent to the Attorney General's Department. Whether true or false, nothing happens, and the, part, the complainant is constantly informed that you know, we're still awaiting um, a report from the Attorney General's Department. Poli victim impact policing in Ghana is a major problem, and it's reflected in the situation we have. We all know that there was a certain degree of laxity on the part of the police as far as investigation to this issue was concerned. In fact, but for the media, mm -hmm. there may have been no investigation ongoing. There may, and I'm choosing my words advisedly, there may have been no investigations ongoing. We have a major problem of a certain lack of seriousness at the level of criminal investigations in Ghana. And so many murders are, are unsolved, many issues of kidnapping. Koko mentioned some statistics. We didn't know about all these. Why is the country not informed? If many of these have not been resolved, and I'm sure some of them may many, not have been resolved, many, many, many have not been resolved. Many. If many of these kidnappings remain unresolved, then the country demands and um, deserves certain routine information as far as the actions of these are concerned. I think routinely, we can have this quarterly, once, uh, once every quarter, or at least if biannually, some information of the extent to which these investigations have succeeded in either unraveling the kidnapping or these are being declared unsolved or these are being consigned to the scope of cold cases. We have to know something. Because the thing about criminal investigation and criminal solution is that you deter criminality. The converse is true. If you do not solve <coughs> crimes, you embolden criminality. Because all a, crime, a criminal has to do is to succeed in avoiding the first two, three weeks or months of detection and we have zero cold case. So once it goes into the space of cold case, there's no further investigation and that's it. I think these are the systemic problems. We have the structural problems. Um, who is commanding who? Who is overseeing who? Who is checking who? Since these criminal, or rather these kidnappings became national and they have become <coughs> typical in Ghana, um, to what extent have we had proper reporting uh, you know, in the ranks, um, and, and, and the ranks of, of the police administration, for example? We have a regional commander in Takradi. I'm sure, obviously, he's the primary officer as far as this is concerned from that uh, on the ground. Mm -hmm. What is his report? Do we have some sufficient I mean, sufficient facts, for example, to know whether these, these girls are still in the jurisdiction or they've left the jurisdiction? And if we are seeking the help of other ECOWAS countries, do we know whether they're within the ECOWAS region? And if we know they're not within the ECOWAS region, have we sought the, the help of Interpol? if this, for example, falls under the regime of Interpol. So these are some of the key questions. I think the systemic issue, the broader issues. Clearly, she misspoke. And I think clearly there's a certain recognition on her part that she misspoke. It is important to build confidence in that area, confidence that the chief investigator of Ghana is in charge. And so having acknowledged to a degree uh, that she misspoke, I think there's an acknowledgment, but not quite, because I think there's a statement to the effect that that's not what she meant. Mm -hmm. But if there's a certain acknowledgement on her part that she misspoke, and I join Kuku to say that uh, excellent credentials, excellent achievements. I don't know if there has been a past female in that position, but she probably is the only one remember in recent times. Mm. I mm. think the reality is that there's a certain degree of achievement and excellence on her part that one can celebrate. And this appears to be denting that. So I, if you ask me whether the prospect and possibility exists that she can reconstruct her image, that exists, but it's a window of opportunity that may be fast closing. And therefore, it's imperative that she probably seizes the opportunity, restores a certain degree of credibility and respect to her own position as it used to be in terms of public communication, and probably seize the mantle by demonstrating the zeal that the public expects. Because I'm worried about these statistics, and clearly they were, I'm sure there were many of them were there before she became CID boss, but I'm worried yeah. about these statistics of kidnapping that are unresolved. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you know, people have their children out there, people mm -hmm. have their relatives out there, and there's a certain degree of insecurity, I think, 
Um, you know, I'm sure families are already beginning to have conversations about their yeah. kids when they're going out. And you don't right. want that scenario mm. or that state of affairs. So mm. I think she has achieved enough that is worthy mm. of commendation. Okay. If you ask me whether she should be given the boot or whether she should be redeployed, etc., I don't think I have any recommendation on that because in my opinion, it is the piecemeal aspect of the problem. Okay. The larger problem is systemic and structural, and that ought to be dealt with. All right. So okay. um, he, he does some training for police, I, I have known, right? Yes. So um, he's speaking from mm -hmm. an experience and an encounter with the police. Thank you. Now, Clara, we seem to be talking as if she made that, that claim or that assertion that we know where they are, they are safe, and they'll be reunited with their parents, as if she made that out and she made it of her own. We got to know, of course, that the BNI was involved. And definitely, she would have cleared and checked with the BNI, except that the Daily Guide gave a report, and the BNI came out you know, to also deny that as well, or something to the effect the police came to deny all of that. So there may be some problem. But is it right to heap all the blame on her? When we know for a fact that she will not come out to say, we know where they are, they are safe, if they do not know that for a fact. Okay. Now, I think, um, before I answer that question, we could use the word that described how I feel about this. It's sad. When I, following everything that has happened, it's sad. You look at her, you look at how far she has come, and you really want to be behind her. Yeah. You really want to have her back. It's true. But the truth is, her conduct is indefensible. There's nothing to defend. You want with all your heart to defend her. But you, if you are being honest with yourself, which you have to be, you look at it, and you, the truth is, it's not defensible. Now, one, should we place the, the whole blame on her? Please. When she says, I was giving hope, and now we are, she's explaining that the hope was to the police. She doesn't say that we no longer know where they are. Or the two statements cannot be married together. No, she no, she doesn't can't. say we don't know where they are any, we, we, do not, uh, we don't know where they are any longer. If we know where they are, then if, she, if you, what you are saying is that we know where they are, then that's why you are saying it. But if you say, I was saying it to give hope to the police, that in itself suggests that. It cancels. Exactly, it cancels know, okay. that. The statement is true. But All right, so who to blame if you it's, were it's there? The, the issue is not even whether or not they know where they are or it's giving hope to the police. The issue for me, one, is we have the structural problems. But aside the structural problems, you, you work in a structure. You have some personal responsibility requirements, even in that structure. I am not going to address the, the structural issues because uh, uh, Kofi has done that. I'm going to look at the personal requirements of a professional. Every professional owes a personal responsibility to be professional in your office. If you are in public office, you owe a duty to be candid to the people of Ghana, and you owe a duty to act in the welfare of the people of Ghana. In her, in her case here, assuming it was even true that they had found the girls, was it professional to announce that in a press conference to the media, not to the family? This was not a conversation you were having with the family. Was, that, was it professional to do that? Her lawyer, the attorney general, says that was wrong. It was indiscreet. Yes, so it was not professional. Wrong exercise of judgment, exactly. as you say. So even, even coming on the back of that, the issue of professionalism, then you come back, the second issue, like Kweku says, makes it worse. Were you candid then to the people of Ghana at the time you made that statement? And was it in the welfare of the people? That, that was made. I think for all of us, I think it's a sad situation, but I think it is a situation for all of us to learn mm. that when you are giving a responsibility, be professional at all times. Okay. Be professional, be candid, act in what you believe mm. to be in the welfare of the people. Now, her continuous holding of the position, if we have to be honest and face it, does it instill confidence in the public? We have to ask ourselves that question. So it's a sad, What's it's your a very answer to sad, that question? No I, no, I would leave that to everybody. To, to, I mean, your guess is as good as my, as good as mine. Everybody can, ra can make their own conclusion. I know it's, it's difficult for you more particularly because 
not just that because you're a woman, but because yes. you're also championing women, you know, leadership yes, matters. Exactly. And so, I so but, but much want to. Can you answer to. that? Can you answer that? What's your answer to that? No, I won't. I won't <laughs> answer that. I've raised a question. It, it's, there are some rhetorical questions. It's sure. a rhetorical question. Okay. I think the you answer don't answer. Is in, it's in belt. <laughs> I, you don't answer rhetorical questions. Mm. But the point is, it's sad. The truth is really, 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 it's sad. It's a sad situation. Mm. But I think there's an opportunity for all of us to learn mm. that, yes, there are some mistakes when you make, they are costly. It may be a mistake, but mm. it's a costly mistake. She would have to consider how she, 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 she can get herself out okay. of it. Okay. Interesting. And, and, and I'm being informed reliably that the lead institution for this investigation is not a BNI. So those who are trying to, as it were, shift the focus and let the BNI take the blame, they should stop. The lead institution doing this investigation is the police CID. Yeah. Yeah. But let me just chip it, there's in part of the problem, and again, it's a learning for all of us, especially the, for the police. Mm. If she had communicated formally mm. and properly, she wouldn't have done it on the radio station. She wouldn't have done it the way it was done. It would have been a proper press, press conference or something like that organized by the police. No, the she, earlier one was press, press conference by the police, mm. the one she, she talked she about. No, no, but Kuku, sincerely, when she says she was actually giving hope to the police. How do you marry that with what she said, yeah, actually? That, that's what, even when she said the parents should keep on keeping yes. on. She didn't right. say police should keep on keeping on. Straight away. He did, she right. didn't. So coming formally and coming in a structured way would have helped all these things. Mm. I mean, who is even reading over really her scripts, yeah. for example, and advising okay. all these things? Because they can create major it's issues. And as, some, as everyone is agreeing to, so uh, this is appearing to be an anticlimax of an otherwise Const excellent Exactly the and way to put it. Hopefully it shouldn't be. I, I, I do hope that she's not remembered for this. I do hope that she's remembered for the good things that we know her for. And that's what I'm saying, that there appears to be a window of opportunity that could still be taken advantage of. question is whether that can be exploited to, to salvage mm. the otherwise excellent... Uh, okay, so, so let's, let's, let's hear her, the original comment that she made, mm -hmm. which has led to all of this. Let's hear that, and then we take a break. We we'll return to deal with the special uh, prosecutor one year after. Together with the BNI, we've worked very well, and currently we know where the girls are. I am unable to give the details because we don't want to compromise their safety. We are working hard together with other stakeholders so that these girls are brought back home safely. The assurance to the family is that they should keep on keeping on. The ladies, they will know where they are and they are safe. So very soon, they will brought back home and they will go back to their family. 